Hey guys and welcome to my channel Nomadic Unicorn. I'm Hannah and today I'm going to talk to you all about how to claim your tax back from your working holiday in Australia. I've been waiting to film this video for a little while because I wanted to make sure I'd completely gone through the process and can tell you all about it from my perspective. I am not by any means a tax expert. I will give you as relevant and up-to-date information as I can that I have gleaned from many official places, but do your own research. If you're watching this a bit further down the line, things may have slightly changed, so just be aware of that. This is also the first video I have filmed on my new G7X Mark II, so please let me know what you think of the quality in comparison to the GoPro. I will let you tell me in the comments down there. I'm really hoping that we can up the ante and give you some much nicer quality videos with this camera, but I'm still not completely decided whether it's staying or not, so do let me know your thoughts down there. Let's jump straight into this tax back. It is confusing and there are many things to think about, so I'm just gonna run through a few really basic bits with you. Number one, you're not guaranteed that you will receive all of the tax you've paid on your working holiday back to you at the end of it. There are a lot of factors that come into play and even if you meet all of the eligibility criteria that the government has, you will not receive the whole amount. So that is a myth. Please don't think that you'll get everything back. You will need a tax file number or TFN, which I've spoken about in previous videos. Link up here to the one that you want to watch. Oh, <laughs> new camera. Link up here to the one that you want to watch about that because you will need that for claiming your tax. You also will need to know from the very beginning if you are an Australian resident for tax purposes or a non-resident for tax purposes because whenever you get a job you will need to fill in a form that your employer has to send off and on that form it will ask for your tax file number and it will ask you to tick a box as to whether you're an Australian resident for tax purposes or not. So how do you know whether you are? The main way of thinking about it is will you be working more or traveling more? If you're literally only gonna be traveling like say a month out of the year or, or two years you're in Australia, you're probably going to be an Australian resident for tax purposes. If you're only gonna be picking up little bits of work along the way for a couple of weeks or a month or so at a time, you're going to be a non-resident for tax purposes. So how do you qualify as a resident for tax purposes. So to qualify, the government wants you to be living and working in one location for six months or 183 days. And that 183 days is the magic number. You will also be required to show residential behavior, which is things like having a library membership or maybe joining some kind of sports club or a local gym. It will also be things like renting accommodation or having your name on a tenancy agreement or something, which isn't very common in Australia for backpackers, but just renting a share house or a flat or something will also show residential behavior. It's acting like somebody that lives in that country, essentially. <laughs> That's the easiest way for me to explain it. Why does it matter whether you're an Australian resident for tax purposes or a non-resident? I keep saying for tax purposes because this is very, very different to the immigration side of things, so please remember that. It matters because you will pay different rates of tax. So for Australian residents, they will pay less tax than for non-residents. And also, Australian residents get to claim a tax-free threshold. So if you are somebody from another country and you're a non-resident for tax purposes, you will be paying tax on the first dollar you earn. Whereas a resident for tax purposes will have a certain amount they earn before paying tax. As a resident for tax purposes, you can also claim tax offsets. So this will be things like uniform for work or anything relating to the job that you've had to pay out to be able to do that job. To get the most tax back, you will have to be deemed as an Australian resident for tax purposes. So just be aware if you're not, you may not receive very much back or possibly anything at all. 
when does the Australian tax year run? So the Australian tax year runs from the 1st of July to the 30th of June, which may be different to that of your home country. How do you actually apply to get your tax back? There's really just two ways of doing this. The first way is to go through the ATO, which is the Australian Taxation Office, and I will put a link down there for you with their website, and you would just fill in the forms and paperwork necessary to claim your tax through them. The bonus with this is that it is absolutely free, but you do have to do all of the work yourself with a little bit of help from them. The other option, which appeals to many backpackers and myself included, is to use a tax agency that are used to working with people on working holidays and know exactly how to go about getting their tax back for them at the end of the tax year or when they leave the country. Just be aware that with tax agencies, you will have to pay them. It is not free, <laughs> unfortunately. And the amount you pay will depend on the agency. I really recommend that you look at a few different bodies and agencies because they do vary. Some will just want a flat rate fee, so they might just say, you give us $80 and we sort it all out. Others will want a percentage of your total tax refund. So if you know how much you're likely to get through looking at your pay slips and things, just calculate whether you think it is worth going with a company that's gonna take a percentage or a flat rate fee, because it will vary greatly. So what do you need to be able to actually apply to claim your tax back? You will need that tax file number or TFN that I explained about. You will also need your pay slips from your employers, specifically your last pay slip when you left that job or your PAYG. Some companies will say you have to have a PAYG and my friend Irene, who I was traveling with for part of the time, had this with a company she went with. I think it was like Easy Tax Back or something. And all she did, because she had to pay a fee up front with them, was email them saying, I would like a refund because I will go to taxback.com. They only need my last payslip. They then soon backtracked and said, oh no, your last payslip's fine. So you can just use your last payslip. You don't have to have the PAYG if you're struggling to get hold of it. You will also need the dates that you lived in that specific area that you were living and working in because they will want to know exactly how long you were there and whether you do qualify as a resident or not. So what can I tell you about my experience of using a tax agency? I used taxback.com, as I explained, a different agency to my friend. Now, they are one of the biggest ones in Australia, particularly with backpackers on a working holiday. They used to come into the hostel that I worked for accommodation in and give talks to everyone, and they are a name that you will see a lot when it comes to getting your tax back from your working holiday in Australia. I just want to say that I am no way affiliated with taxback.com. I just want to let you know my experiences with the company and whether I thought it was worth the money. They are well known and from my experience, they are really good. Now I wasn't going to go with them because they charge a percentage and I wanted a company with a flat rate fee. However, Funny little story is that I decided to look into my tax back at 3 a.m. in the morning after working all day, which is a bad idea generally. And I stupidly signed a few things that I should not have signed at that time before making a definite decision that they were the company I wanted to work with. Top tip, do not sign anything unless you are 100% sure that you want to go with this company or agency because once I looked into it with what I'd signed, I legally had to go with them, and if I didn't get my tax back through them, I still had to pay them. So I ended up by default and stupidity on my own part going with taxback.com. I am glad I did, the service was really good, and they offer a lot of things that are really helpful for backpackers, especially those that aren't actually in Australia at the time of going through the whole refund process. They give you a online chat and support 24 seven. You get a tax back tracker, which means you can see exactly where it is, whether they're still looking for documents or if they've sent it off to the ATO 
or whether they're waiting for a response from the ATO. You get a dedicated agent who is in touch with you via email, which is really good as well. They do offer a document retrieval service, for, so for anyone that's having difficulties getting hold of their last payslip or PAYG, you can pay an extra, I think it's about $40 they quoted me, to get the relevant documents and they look into it all for you. They give you a free estimate like most of the companies out there, but just be aware that as soon as you go for that free estimate, you will have to put in your email, contact details, etc, etc. So although it is entirely free, you you will have people trying to contact you all of the time trying to get you to go with them. Taxback.com ask for 9% of the total refund and a handling fee. So it is a percentage company, it's not a flat rate fee, however that is for refunds over $1,100. If it's under that, they ask for $99 with a handling fee. They also offer a superannuation service. If you want to know more about super and how to get your super back, go to my video, which I will link up here for you. I didn't go with them for super because they want 20% of your super refund and I just didn't think it was worth it. Having been through the process, as I explained in that video, I would do it with the ATO in person rather than going through an agency. My overall experience with using an agency in taxback.com was that it was extremely stress-free. There was always someone to talk to if there was a problem that cropped up. And if I went back and did it all over again, I think I would definitely go back with an agency and I would go back with taxback.com. If you're interested, by the way, like I said, no affiliation whatsoever, I'll put a link to their website just down there for you. Another thing to note with claiming your tax back is that you have to have been in Australia for six months before you can apply for your tax refund. This was a problem for me personally because I arrived at the end of April, so I missed my first tax year rebate because I hadn't been working or in the country long enough to apply for it at the end of that tax year. This wasn't a problem, um, I did it at the same time that I did the current year one and I got that money back first. So you can claim for previous years, if you haven't been in the country, the required length of time before the end of the tax year. What if you leave the country before the tax year has finished? This was also a problem that I encountered. I really didn't plan this very well, but it's not a problem because you can file an early claim and the only difference is you'll need to send off some extra paperwork. I actually had to post the paperwork, but they have, taxback.com have offices in various locations, so it wasn't an issue. However, for some reason, I didn't get my refund as soon as I would have liked. I don't know quite what happened there, but I didn't actually get it until that tax year finished. And I don't know whether that's normal and, and whether I just misunderstood the whole early claim thing or whether they somehow made a mistake. I really don't know, to be honest with you guys, so I'm sorry about that. How long does it take? So Irene going through her company, she got her tax back within six weeks. And for myself, it took around 12 weeks in total, I think. So how does it work when you put in the claim with an agency? You essentially send them all the documents and you can do this by post or you can scan them and email them across or upload them directly through the website. They will tell you any documents that they still require once you've done that so you know exactly where you are. Once you've done that, they look at everything and give you a estimate of your tax refund. As soon as that has all happened, they send it off to the Australian Taxation Office, the ATO, and then wait to hear back from them. As soon as they've heard back from the ATO, they send you an email saying whether the estimate was correct, whether it's more or less. And once they receive the funds from the ATO, they let you know and ask which account you want them paid into. They can pay it into an overseas account, that's no problem, but there is a charge for that. And obviously your home bank may charge you a currency transfer fee as well. So how much do you get back? That entirely depends on how much you've been working and how much you've actually paid in tax and what your allowance is depending on whether you're a resident or a non-resident. I can tell you exactly how much I got back, which was for that first tax year I explained about where I hadn't been in Australia long enough at the end of the tax year to make the refund. 
So for that little period of time, I got a total refund of 598 Australian dollars. Taxback.com took $99 from this. This came directly out of the refund. I have not had to pay them any money from my account whatsoever. It was just directly out of the money the ATO sent. And the total I got for that year was $499. For the other year, which is the year where I did most of my work, I got a total refund of $4,447. Again, Taxback took money out of that. Their fees for that year were $169, and that was because it was a percentage this time. And my total refund for the last tax year just gone was $4,278 equivalent on the screen. And this is amazing, guys. This is so good because I've been able to now put that money aside and put it into funds for my next bit of traveling. It's awesome if you get the money back, but just please don't have your heart set on it because as I have explained in this video, there really are quite specific criteria and the whole residency thing does need to be looked at. I really hope this video has been helpful. I know it's a bit of a minefield. I've tried to break it down as easily as I can for you. If you do have any questions, please pop them in the comments box down below and I will do my very best to answer them. Like I said, not an expert, so there may be some queries that I can't answer, but for those, the websites and important information is all in the description box, so you can find links to people that will be able to answer those queries for you if I can't. I will see you later in the week. Until then, much love. Take care. Bye. How do we stop this? I think it's this button. Is it this button? Bye. No, not that button. Is it not that button? No. <laughs> How do we stop it? How do I stop recording? How do I stop this thing?